The torso and pelvis must be kept perfectly square and motionless while doing these simple rotating movements and its variations. Once the exercise has been practiced with each leg separately and several times, one should do it with both legs at the same time. At the beginning of the warm-up section, the exercises must be quite simple and effortless. Their purpose is to mobilize the dancer's physique gradually and without stress in the weight-supporting positions. To fulfill our aim, these movements have to be executed many times in the right speed and with perfect breath control.
bull's shoulders must be kept completely still and relaxed while mobilizing the neck. The width of a wide second position must never be forced. Dancers should practice in it within their individual limits. However, if working in a relaxed manner and with the right breathing, it will anyway widen gradually. By their nature, some of the previous exercises included movements which demanded some arching of the back. So now, it is beneficial to give those muscles a rest as well as a slow stretch. The floor bar session 
of the practice must take place only when we are satisfied that without exhaustion the dancer's entire physique has become warm and mobile. At the beginning stages of these specific studies, the exercises should be practiced with the support of the wall in order to gain perfect placement. Doing the tondus while lying on the back or on the stomach enables the dancer to use both legs at the same time. Using the head, arms and the top together with the leg movements underlines the importance of coordination and at the same time strengthens the diaphragm and the back muscles. Now again, the dancer could do with a well-deserved rest and stretch.
make sure that during practice one frequently uses some of the resting exercises with correct breathing. Practicing all the different versions of the Passeretires and doing quite a few of them every day are crucially important for every dancer. Gently alternating the turned out movements with the turned in ones will loosen the hip joint and will help to achieve a better turn out without causing injury. Hence they must always be performed before plie and develop exercises. The placement of the head and shoulders during the twisting of the spine have special importance. Some dancers might find it difficult to execute the maximum turnout version of the plies without arching their back and or cycling their feet. This compromise should never happen as it leads to injuries.
If for some dancers these exercises cause any stress in the hip or knee joints, it should be not practiced. In these versions of the Develope exercises, the placement of the pelvis and the shoulders must not be compromised for the sake of lifting the leg to a higher degree. The dancer must not strain the shoulders or the neck. When the leg is lowered to the starting positions, the arching of the back must be avoided. <laughs> 